This is Adele Gasly. I'm going to present to you part four of the chapter about transformers. This part covers the following topics, polarity and multi-secondary windings. To obtain a continuous variable output voltage at the secondary of the transformer, we use what we call the auto transformer. Auto transformers are kind of transformers with a special design. They have a special connection of their primary and secondary windings from which a variable AC voltage can be obtained at the secondary side. A common winding connection is shown here, where the secondary, which means the output, is taken from the, a tap at point B on the same winding. In contrast with the two winding transformers discussed earlier, the primary and secondary of the auto transformer are physically and thus electrically connected at points B and C. However, the basic principle of operation is the same as that of the two winding transformer. Notice that all the turns link the same flux in the transformer core, so we can write V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2, which is the turns ratio or transformer ratio that we can denote with the letter A. If the secondary tapping at point B is replaced by a slider, the output voltage V2 can be varied over the range between 0 and V1. The ampere turns or MMF provided by the upper half turns between points A and B is given by this equation. And the ampere turns or MMF provided by the lower half turns between B and C is given by this equation. For ampere turn balance from the upper and lower parts of the winding, we can write that F U equal F L, which leads to I1 over I2 equal to 1 over the turns ratio A. These equations indicate that, viewed from the terminals of the auto transformer, the voltages and currents are related by the same turns ratio as we have seen in the two windings transformer. So the advantages of an auto transformer connections are lower leakage reactance, lower losses, lower exciting current, increased KVA rating, and variable output voltage when a sliding contact is used for the secondary. but its disadvantage is the direct connections between the primary and secondary sides. A single output voltage auto transformer can be obtained by using a normal two windings transformer and connecting its terminals as shown in this figure. This connection can be represented by this equivalent circuit of the auto transformer, where N1 is designating the fixed number of turns of the primary winding, N2 is designating the fixed number of turns of the secondary winding. Now with that, we are tapping N point A and B, which are the same, and the uh, voltage, output voltage will be fixed, will not be variable. Based on this equivalent circuit, we can write the voltage and current equations as shown here. However, if we compare the power transfer capabilities of the same piece of equipment, when connected as a normal two isolated windings, primary and secondary, and when connected as an auto transformer, then we can write the followings. The total apparent power SA for case A is equal to E1 I1, which is also equal to E2 I2. While the total apparent power SB for case B is equal to V1 IS, which is also equal to V2 I load. Based on the equivalent circuit, 
we know that V1 is the sum of E1 and E2. So we can write the power for case B, SB equal E1 I1 plus E2 I1. But we know that E1 I1 is actually equal to SA, which is the power for case A. Therefore, we can write that the power for case B is equal to the power for case A plus E2 multiplied by I1. Which means that the power transfer capability of the auto transformer is higher than that of the normal two winding transformer, even though we are using the same windings and core. There is another type of transformers called variac, which is a variable auto transformer. An example is shown here. The winding is divided into three parts with N1, N2, and N3 number of turns in each part. The output is connected to a sliding terminal, which means that the number of turns N2 is variable depending on the position of the sliding tap. On the other hand, the input voltage is tapped at point Y, which gives a fixed primary winding number of turns equal to N1 plus N2. So the secondary can tap at any point X of the winding between O and Z. Now let us determine the variac output voltage for different operating scenarios. If the secondary taps at point X, the load voltage can be expressed as the source voltage multiplied by the ratio of N1 divided by N1 plus N2. In this case, the load voltage is smaller than the source voltage. While if the secondary taps at point Y, the load voltage equals the source voltage. But if the secondary taps at point Z, the load voltage can be expressed as the source voltage multiplied by the ratio of the total number of turns, N1, plus N2 plus N3 divided by N1 plus N2. And in this case, the load voltage is larger than the source voltage. So the variac can adjust the load voltage from zero to greater than the supply voltage. So it's a large range of variation, which depends on the number of turns, of course, of the winding. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching.